<clears throat> so yeah, I've made another tier list and we're gonna go through it. Gonna talk about some of the less obvious ones. The rest of it should pretty much solve itself. But we'll talk about these three. I'm not ranking these because I want this tier list to be about which units are good in campaign. Like these units are obviously OP, but that's just kind of unfair on all of the other units. Also, I put the bard there because I actually hate that unit. All right, so same tiers as before. There's just been a lot of rearranging. I think a lot of units have been moved down. A few have been moved up and none of them occupy God tier, except the chariot, because the chariot is God. All right, so I guess we'll start in bad tier. These two. When I made that video on Sunday, a lot of people backed me up saying that the fan bearer is actually quite crap and also a lot of people in the comment section saying that the balloon archer is also really bad which, you know, I wholeheartedly agree that the balloon archer is completely useless. You should never, under no circumstances, be using this unit. Wheelbarrow tank, I think, is one that people may have a little bit of an issue with. I said it in my farmer faction video. I just think it's, it's not very good at anything and I can't really think of a situation where you would ever use it. All right, the okay tier. I think this tier out of all of them has seen the biggest inflation of units. A lot of units have been moved down, a couple have been moved up. Uh, I have moved the painter up. All right, all right, Reddit. Is the only reason I put the painter in okay tier because Reddit had a go at me? Maybe. Also, the bottom is dragon. Quite a few people on my importance of units videos said that the dragon was not useless and they actually think it's pretty good. I still don't think he's that great. I think saying he was useless was a bit unfair because there are clearly people who have gotten him to work, but I personally haven't. OK tier is home to a lot of the peasant units. I've explained before that I think peasant units as a whole are quite limited. There are only a certain amount of situations that you would ever consider using them. So their usefulness isn't really there, but I have put a few above it because they are a bit more flexible in the way that you can use them and they have a little gimmick that does make them better than the other ones. And of course, the Ballista remains in okay tier. Probably gonna have to preface that by saying, I do not think the Ballista sucks. It's the best at what it does. No other unit does what the Ballista does, but the Ballista only does one thing. Like. <laughs> It does that one thing well, but it only does one thing. The Mammoth is still down here. We had definitely reached Peak Mammoth. I know the Mammoth got a buff, but the Mammoth wasn't really destined for much in the first place. The same issues still apply. He doesn't deal damage quick enough. Still a big target. But if Landfall was to change these two things, he would no longer be a Mammoth. So I get why he's like that, but unfortunately, he ain't great. All right, moving on to uh, good tier. Also, ignore the fact that the colors are reversed, or I'm sorry. I've only just noticed that. <laughs> so these units aren't bad, but then they don't exceed at anything either. They're good. You may be confused that these two units are here. I only put them there because A, they're very expensive, and B, the pikemen exist. Yeah, the rest of these units, I think it's fairly self-explanatory. Yeah, here, here are the peasant units that I think are better than the rest. The farmer, because of its longer range. The dynamite thrower is good because of the dynamite. I understand that it most likely will also kill the thrower, but the fact that it has the ability to throw dynamite does mean that you can use it in more situations. I've also got the flintlock. I th I think the flintlock is probably the best peasant unit in the game. It's got range and then it just turns into a regular peasant. But those initial volleys of shots, they, they hit decent damage. And because it's so cheap, you can have quite a lot of them. And then also the skeleton because of the fear mechanic. If a skeleton goes near a unit, the unit turns, away, turns around and runs away, which can make it incredibly useful if you use that in tandem with ranged units and things like that. All right, so moving into amazing tier. These units are a clear cut above the rest. These are the units that you should probably be using. And yes, the Pirate Queen is in this tier. Despite the Pirate Queen's nerf, I still think she's one of the best units in the game. She's no longer OP, that you actually have to think about what you do when you use the Pirate Queen now, but she's still super good. Also got the tank. I was debating putting the tank in good tier, just because it is pretty killable if you know what you're doing. The Berserker, the fact that he's so cheap and his leap ability just makes him so good. And if you have a group of these, then it's borderline OP. You may notice that the Flag Bearer is in good tier, but I've put the Banner Bearer in amazing tier. Why, why have I done that? Well, it's not to downplay the Flag Bearer, because the flag bearer is really good. But I feel the banner bearer is so much more versatile. Pretty much, no matter the situation, you can slip in a banner bearer somewhere and it will do really well. Halberd, the halberd I think is like majorly slept on. I don't see enough people really talking about the halberd. The range, 
the damage, it's all really solid. And I think the Halberd was probably the closest thing the Pirate Queen had to a counter when she was OP. Like, if you had enough Halberds, you at least stood a little bit of a chance. But now, after the Pirate Queen's nerf, like, how to counter the Pirate Queen is definitely the Halberd. We've also got the Firework Archer and Snake Archer. Snake Archer, you know, the snakes do decent damage and they distract units. And the Firework Archer, it's just really good. And, of course, we have the Pike in Amazing Tier. My goodness, the Pike hits so much damage. Like, it's the only unit so far that can effortlessly kill the Ice Giant. And it's only 400. And I think the main criticism of him is that you know, he only gets a couple of pokes. But if you look at him compared to the Sarissa, which is probably the closest unit to the Pikeman, the Sarissa's only going to get a couple of pokes off before itself dies. And so the Pikeman's just sort of maximised that. It's like, well, I, I am only going to get a couple of hits off before I die. So I might as well make those, those two hits I do get off, like the most powerful hits possible. And then up in the God tier, we have the Chariot. 